Welcome back, guys, to Kerbal Space Explosion, and today is the day. Today is the day where we launch for Duna. Let me introduce to you the Duna Disaster Lander Launcher Mark V. I've done some testing on this thing off camera, so I know that it's stable. These boosters, man, they took a while to get right. SAS on throttle up. Although we don't need the throttle up for the boosters because they automatically go full bore. Let's rock and roll. And a little bit of lag. This first stage, the frame rate will be a little choppy. But then once we get done with these boosters, we should be... We should be goody goody gumdrops. Good as gravy. I tried really hard to add a second stage or an additional stage underneath these boosters. An additional 27 boosters. And then to do two, two, two stages of boosters. But it just didn't work out. Uh, it was too... Mm, whatever I tried, it was too unstable. It would drift off course too much. This one is going to do that a little bit, but not much. Enough that we can correct it and uh, benefit from the boost. It's going to get us mostly out of this the thicker part of the atmosphere. And also, we, we sort of crossed the the thrust to weight ratio where it just became inefficient. Putting boosters on the bottom actually slowed us down overall. Um, yep, so it didn't work, I tried. Okay, there's that stage done. And that got us all the way up to 200 meters per second. Let's correct over here though. Let's correct. So this is the rocket. We are going to do not, we're gonna do some science. While we're in the thicker part of the atmosphere, I wanna throttle down to 200 meters per second. I'm going to try and do as much science as possible in the various stages of the mission. As soon as we get... Let's throttle down even more. As soon as we get um, right across that threshold from the light blue into the slightly darker blue, we will begin to throttle up. We're kind of there now. Alright, let's go ahead and throttle up. Let's check out our progress. Have a nice thing going. All right, everything's going fine. Let's just stick right to this angle. We may rotate a little bit, but we should be nice and stable. Uh, yeah, I did some testing, and unfortunately, I don't have the fuel lines yet, and so I can't do the so-called asparagus staging yet. I tried um, dropping off the outer layers and stages. It just wasn't as efficient as doing it this way, firing them all at once, except for the center three. Oh, that's a cool angle. Whoa, I don't know what that was. Look at that angle. Uh, it wasn't as efficient. Oh, pay attention. It wasn't as efficient as firing... Oh, gosh, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> wasn't as efficient as uh, firing them all at once and then saving the center stage for the end. We're going to get right up to about... 85 or 90, and then we're going to stop. 90. Good enough. Okay. Then we will do a maneuver here at our apoapsis. Kersplow. Get into an orbit, and then we will take a look at what we need to do to uh, to vector over towards, towards uh, Duna. Someone said if you click on this, it will stay, maybe if I keep the maneuver, no. No, get rid of you. Someone said if you click on it, the the label of the uh, your distance from the surface would stay up there, but I don't see it. 88, 90, that's good enough. We just need a stable orbit. And we've got about a minute and a half until that happens. This thing is very cumbersome at this point. But we're going to, I guess maybe I'll stage a little bit, or I'll, uh, I'll fire for this maneuver a little bit early, because we're about to lose a lot of these rockets. And I want to be sure I'm going straight <laughs> when I uh, stage them off, so we don't lose anything. We don't have any explosions. We've got about a minute. And change. Let's speed up for a bit. Yeah, so that uh, the staging there is going to slow us down a bit. 
So if we started at nine, let's start like right about now, basically. Shmow! Full throttle! There's one section, and then... There goes the other section. Okay, now we can stage one, stage the other. That is a... Uh, oh gosh, that happens every time. But we made it... I think we made it through... <laughs> unscathed, more or less. Yeah, that happens every time, and I had them in separate uh, decouplers. Just because earlier in the development of this rocket, um, that's that's what I tried to do, basically. I think maybe, yeah, are we, we went a little bit past our apoapsis here. Hopefully we are not burning too much fuel doing this. If we can get right on this... Shunk! Okay, that's close enough. That is close enough. 83 kilometers there, 97 kilometers there. Whoop! Okay, we are in orbit. Let's check over the rocket to see if we lost anything. Uh, these are what's left of the decouplers. They look fine. We have most of our fuel for this stage left. All of my rocket engines here. Actually, how about we do this? Let's turn on the lights. Let's turn on our resources tab and take a look at our electric charge. Looks like I put enough solar panels on the thing that we can just keep the lights on, at least at this point. Excellent. Uh, landing gear is all there. I put an additional four parachutes on there. Uh, that's a little hard to see because the lights aren't directly hitting that surface. Yeah, we're doing okay. Let me just make sure we're going at one time speed. Landing gear all looks good. <laughs> Doesn't hurt to double check. There's my thermometer, I guess you would call it. Not a thermometer, my uh, antenna. Okay, so there's this guy, the Science Junior, which we haven't used yet. Let's go ahead and use it here. Look at that. Okay. The microgravity has greatly affected the growth of crystalline structures. Loose objects are also flying around the bay in a very messy but fascinating way. All right, so we can keep the data or transmit the data at a 20% science value. Hmm, if we keep the data, so here's what I'm not sure about. If we keep the data, can we do another experiment with this guy um, at a later stage and transmit it? But then there's also the fact that this guy is not gonna come back with us. He was a little too bulky, he didn't fit into our plans. Only this thing's coming back, which has these goog canisters attached. So we should probably just be transmitting all of them because it's not coming back with us. Maybe with a future rocket. There we go. And look at our charge. Now we have such a high charge because... Okay, it's done. It should start to refill. We have such a high charge because I put battery packs here, which are increasing my max. I bet if I turn off the lights there, it will fill up. Oh, you know what? We can't really see the sun much from this angle because maybe the angle that we're, uh, we're facing sort of limits the amount of coverage these things are getting. I don't know. It is slowly filling up, just not as fast as I might like. But next time we do a burn, that will do something. We're going to save these until we get a little deeper because we want to bring them back with us because that's going to be worth a lot of science. All right, so let's take a look at the solar system. We're orbiting around Kerbin. Where's the, okay, like this. We want to head for Duna. There it is. Okay. Um, so basically, I'm going to thrust away from Kerbin here. And then I'm going to move the maneuver around uh, in such a way until I find the most efficient way to get out there, the slowest burn. So we're gonna do that. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Zoom out, zoom out. Do this until we get, there we go, like that. Okay, so now we're no longer in orbit around Kerbin. We're in orbit around Kerbal, the star. And we need to get out to there, or not necessarily out to the planet. I don't expect to hit the orbit Exactly, or the encounter, rather. See how far apart these are? I don't expect to hit that right away. 
What I expect to happen is to get out here-ish and then do another burn to sort of extend our orbit so that we're kind of uh, elliptical, or not elliptical, but uh, we don't quite match up. And so if we're behind, we'll speed up around the inside. If we're ahead, we'll slow down around the outside. And then we'll eventually rendezvous. Right now, our burn is for 1 minute 20. And here we come up to our burn. I think I'll start it a little early because we're going to finish off light. So I don't want to end up past the midpoint too far. And we'll keep an eye on it on both screens. Basically, it doesn't have to be too precise. We just want to get out into the neighborhood of Duna. And then on the way out there, we'll, we'll try and do some more science. Maybe do an EVA. Here we are burning. There's, uh, there's Moon right there. And there's Kerbin. And we've got 42 seconds left. This is by far the biggest burn of the operation from this point out. At least as far as I can tell. Seems like once we get out of Kerbin's sphere of influence, uh, the rest will be a little bit easier on our fuel tanks. And any, any day now, we should start to see our little, our little guy show up and start. Oh, here it comes. Okay, this is where I want to throttle down for so we don't overshoot it wildly. And let's chase it. Okay, let's just go right there. Okay, so that's pretty good. We're gonna come way out here. And we're, I, this is not even close to a, a good approach if we wanted to do it all with one burn. Now I know there's like websites you can look up things like how to, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this. There's websites you can look up how to, you know, wh where Kerbin needs to be in relation to Duna for you to launch to get there all in one thing. And I really don't want to look it up on a website until they add some sort of function in the game for you to uh, sort of figure that out. I'm going to do it by trial and error and um, by using what little I know about the game at this point. Now it looks like, you see how this is kind of going up? We may need to correct that next time I do um, a burn on the other side. And we are about to escape Carbon. All right, let's go ahead and get out of here. Let's get out of Dodge. Sayonara, Carbon. Nice to know you. And turn on our lights, I guess. Oh, I can't turn them on when we're under time warp. Okay, well, never mind. Yeah, let's get out of here. Let's skedaddle. Where's the moon? We should probably be able to see the moon. There's the moon. Let's go even faster. 10,000 times the speed of light. No, I mean 10,000 times the speed of time. And there it is. You can really see it whizzing around Kerbin right now. Oh, we can go even faster. Oh, yes. 100,000 times. Let's check. Whoa. Okay, let's zoom out a bit. Look at this. Here we go. Yeah, and we're, we're well on our way. So once we get, let's just say, over to here, I'm going to slow down to one times. We'll do some EVA, we'll do some science, and then we'll try to figure out a maneuver to get into an encounter with Duna. And I believe this is as fast, yeah, this is as fast as the game will go, 100,000 times. You can see Duna chugging along. Moho is like a little, little spaz boy going around that fast. Eve's taking her time. Okay, let's get... This is good enough, that far. Go back to one times. There we go, okay. So, we've got full charge. We have, uh, let's see, a third of our fuel tank left. Hopefully that's enough to get into orbit around either Kerbin, or not Kerbin, either Duna or Ike. Either one I would be happy with. And we're going to be sending a lot of our stuff back. Uh, let's see. Hmm, I thought I sent this. Let's discard. Let's do another one. Hmm. Transmit data. I thought I already did this. Apparently we didn't. Or maybe it did it again. Or it's worth the same amount at this point. 
Oh, plus 55 science added. Very nice. Okay, let's check our goo container. Observe mystery goo. Scientific value, 110. Okay, we're going to keep him. Now, tell you what. Let's uh, transmit the first three. See what we get. And then once we get around Duna, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do three and we'll keep them. Okay, so we just did that. We got 40. Let's see what this one will give us. It says 85.6, and we've got a 40% transmit rate. Okay, we got 34, so the value diminishes, but uh, I think once we get out into a new bracket, we'll get full value again, and then we'll keep them. So uh, we may as well transmit them all now. Get some more science at it. That's 26 more right there. And we're kind of rotating. Are we rotating? Stop that rotation. Stop that rotation. This thing is uh, a little cumbersome. I still don't have reaction jets at all, nor do I have reaction wheels. We're, the whole thing is based on what the cabin can do. Let's do a quick save. Did a quick save? Better quick save. And then let's do an EVA. All right, let go, buddy. And then put your RCS on and back up here for a bit. Okay, and then let's not go too crazy. <laughs> He's ready to go crazy. Look at him. Let's go crazy. Let's go crazy. All right, then. But don't, yeah, don't get too far away. Now, I know that once we go back to the ship, we can refuel. I don't want to get too far away, though. So let's just try to stabilize or just drift slightly. Let's do an EVA report. 88 value. And we're going to do more uh, reports here. I think he, uh, the way I think it works is he can only have one report for the whole trip. Maybe not. So if I like to do a report now, am I going to be able to do a report later when I get onto the surface of Duna, for instance? I don't know. But we're going to go and transmit this. No comms device on this vessel. Okay. I guess we will uh, do that once we get back in the ship. Let's take a look at the... Let's take a look at her. She's a beauty. <laughs> she got us this far. Don't go... No, don't leave me. Don't leave me. I want to go to Duna too. Uh, yeah, but I feel fairly confident about being able to get back to the ship. I still have 93% of my fuel left, so... We could even do some flybys. Look at it. Oh, this angle is much better. Um, I'd like to turn the lights on, but I can't from here. <laughs> because I'm not on the ship. I, I didn't bring the remote control for the thing. But yeah, it looks nice in the sunlight. You can see there's the uh, the new parachutes and whatnot. All right. That's good. We'll do more EVAs once we get into orbit around Duna itself or Ike, whichever one is easier. And it depends on uh, how much fuel I think I, I have for my given skill level in the game. Okay. Let's go back. Go up some. Okay, slow down a bit. No, no. Go forward. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, we're having a little trouble here. I didn't want to go too risky here. Because this can sometimes be tricky. It's I have to sort of maneuver between this stuff, too, without bouncing off. Okay, grab. There we go. Okay, no big deal. No big deal. Let's board. There we go. Are we going to reconnect? We did. Okay, now how do I send that crew report? Let's see. Crew report. Here we go. No, review stored data. That one. Send that. Okay, another 44 science. All right. Great. Um, good. Send that one too. Why not? And that's an extra 55 science. Awesome. We're going to come back with so much science. And let's see, what is our... We're still at nearly full charge, thanks to our batteries and our solar panel. So I think the next step is to try to get a an encounter with Duna itself. And we will see you next time. Stay tuned for the next exciting chapter in the Duna Disaster Lander Launcher.